Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you how to paint miniatures from start to finish. And now we're on part 11, highlights, both mid-tone and extreme edge highlights. So you now have your miniature here, which has been shaded entirely using a shade or a wash in the previous step and has fully dried. And now you can see a lot of depth of color and a lot of darkness in the recesses and along the edges. And it's looking nice. So that begs the question, what do you do now? What is next? Well now, it is time to start doing highlights on the miniature. And there are two types of highlights. But first, we will just review quickly the three color up method. As I mentioned before, it starts off with a base coat, which is what I've done, and a shade, which we just finished, followed by two highlights, a mid-tone highlight and an extreme edge highlight, and if you want, a glaze to tie them all together. So now it's time for the highlights. First, the mid-tone highlight, which is an intermediate color, which is used to basically go in all the areas but the recesses and along the edges to provide the first layer of contrast. And that way you can just show where the light is hitting on the model. And the second is the extreme slash edge highlight, which is just used to highlight and pick out certain details of the model that you really want to stand out when light hits it. Typically this was with a very bright color and sometimes it's done with such a bright color that you need to bring it back to the spectrum of the original colors with a glaze to blend them all together. Now some common issues with highlights. First of all, an uneven mid-tone highlight. And second, an unrealistic highlight where they highlight areas that should remain shaded, such as the area between the legs, uh, the crevices, the recesses, and areas that would normally be not being hit by the light source. Some ways to solve these problems, first of all, is when doing a mid-tone highlight, do the entire coat at a single time and that way you cover all the area and you make sure it's nice and even and then repeat the step to make sure you get a nice even coat before proceeding to the extreme highlight and follow it finally look at the light source where is the light hitting and cover those areas with the highlights and leave the areas where the light source is not hitting shaded so, now we've got our mid-tone highlight, which is right here, our Altdorf Guard Blue. So we start by giving it a nice shake, just to make sure that we get a nice, consistent coat of paint. So I give it a very hearty shake. And once again, with a not-so-nice brush, I take it from the lid, and I put it into our palette. I always recommend using palettes when painting, because it helps save your brush, and gives you some nice control over your brush for drying up the paint. I thin down the paint a little bit using airbrush thinner and of course stir it in to make sure that the paint is consistently thin. Next I take my brush and I just draw a little bit of paint into my brush, wiping away the excess. I'm using a relatively small brush for this step because you want to control where you're painting. And then next I just start applying this mid-tone highlight to the model, leaving the recesses and the crevices and the areas right beside the edges as well as the parts that the light source is not hitting you'll see for example the area between the legs I will not be painting these areas I just paint all the other areas where my light source is hitting because I have a lamp just above the model and I'm painting all these areas with the Altdorf Guard Blue. As you can see I'm trying to get just nice even coverage of each area before proceeding to the next area. Luckily, the paint is very thin, so it won't leave brush strokes, and it will just blend really nicely in with the previous two coats. And then to make sure you get a nice even coat after this, we're going to repeat this process with two thin layers, as opposed to just one clunky, heavy layer, which can definitely show brush strokes when you're done. So as you can see here, I'm just picking up certain levels of detail that are the being hit by the light source, such as the area of the helmet, as well as the hands. I just leave the, the very edges of each hand the shaded blue. This is also applicable to the boots, for example. I leave all the edges 
the recesses, uh, the shades, and just paint the part where my light is hitting. And same with the knee pads, you'll see I'm not painting the depths of the knee pads just above them, I'm only painting up to the very tip of them. As well as the area around the arrow. You can see that I'm leaving a nice outline around the arrow and around the helmet. And this is already creating some really nice tonal variation on this model. You can see the recesses and you can see the raised areas. And already it's creating a really nice spectrum of colors on this model. You can see three or four, maybe even five distinct shades of blue, depending on how you blend this blue with the model. And I just kept repeating this process over the entire model. This tends to be the longest time spent on a single step is the mid-tone highlight because you have to be very careful so you can't just go over the entire model with ease and it ends up covering a large percentage of the model. And once that is done, let it dry entirely before proceeding to a second thin coat. And for this coat, tend to focus on areas that weren't as nicely blended and just repeat this process on them, making sure that you get all of them covered nice and cleanly before proceeding to the next highlight. This step is relatively quick compared to the first one because you can just focus on areas that it may not have blended in quite nicely. However, what I tend to do with this part is I tend to go even further away from the recesses and edges. That way it creates an actually nice gradient of colors from the edges to the extreme highlights which we'll be doing in a moment. As you can see, I'm just repeating this process, getting a nice even coat before I'm finished the mid-tone highlight. The key to this step, as I mentioned, is using nice, properly thinned down paints and taking your time and applying to the correct areas to provide a nice, realistic contrast. And now it's edge highlight time. So we're gonna take our extreme edge highlight color and we're gonna apply it only to certain tips of areas that we want to stand out when the light source hits it. So for this one, we're gonna be using Calgar Blue, the extreme highlight color for the Ultramarines, Space Marines. And for this step, we're just gonna pick out certain details that we really wanna stand out when the light source hits, such as the edges of the top of the helmet, or the edges of the face, uh, of the breathing apparatus on the helmet, or edges around the eyes. Uh, the tips of the shoulder pads and what you can do to create some really cool contrast is to do a very thin line of this extreme highlight color just beside the recesses of the shoulder pads and this creates some really nice variation when the light source hits it it almost creates like a shining effect on the armor of these areas and as you can see I'm just picking up the details of the fingers and just a quick edge highlight of the hand. Now when doing this edge highlight, as I've done with previous steps, just slowly draw paint into your brush and then drag your brush along the very edge of the surface that you want to highlight. If you make a mistake, feel free to rub away with your thumb or paper towel. And as I said, just very gracefully drag your brush along the edge that you want to highlight. And that's essentially doing the edge highlight. As you can see, I'm just picking out certain details of the backpack that I really just want to stand out when the light hits it. And since this paint is thinned down, I should mention that I thinned down this paint in the exact way that I thinned down my previous step. It will blend quite nicely. And remember, the paint will always dry darker than when you put it on. And as you see here, I'm just picking out the details of the knees and more of the backpack. As you can see, this is a perfect example. I'm just dragging my brush gently along the edge of the helmet and then of the knees and feet. And all of these areas would be areas in which the light source would be hitting. And I repeated this process on the back. Now when doing an edge highlight with thin down paints, you can do a second coat if you wish. And what you do is on the second coat, uh, do a subset of your first coat and that way it creates even more variation in color. However, I'll just be showing this single application of an edge highlight. And that's it. 
Just let it dry then afterwards and you're good to go. And here is what the model looks like after the mid-tone and edge extreme highlights. As you can see now, there's a lot of variation in color over the model, in the crevices, in the recesses, in the shaded areas, and there's a lot of different colors. And this creates a relatively realistic look of the blue armor. So thank you very much for watching. And when you're ready, click on the link below to go to part 12 of this painting series in which I will cover glazes and how you can use them to tint and blend colors together. Also, if you like this video, please leave comments in the comment section down below and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.